and it started snowing at 40 degrees. Why is it snowing at 40 degrees, which would be 3 or 4 degrees C, something like that? Right. Why would it snow at that temperature? And at the same time, not far away, in Kansas City, it was 89 degrees and rain. Because that snow is not even all snow. Uh, I was just saying, I'm starting a new video because I had to restart it. The other one ended. Um, these guys, are, this is Richard Vobes interviewing this guy on Mineral Streets. And um, I just want to say about the snow, the reason why it, they can make it snow 40, 45 degrees and all that stuff is because of the, uh, it's not real snow. People are all over for the last 20 years now, all over the place, different states, different places, different countries. And they're able to go outside and light their snow on fire. Um, their water, in some cases, their water, uh, their light on fire, it's hidden from you. You're not uh, told not to talk about it. If anybody does talk about it, they're called conspiracy whack jobs. They blame it on isolated incidents and all that kind of shit. Let's, let's keep listening. Raining in Chicago, further north, it was 85 degrees and raining. How could there possibly be on October 4th a flash snowstorm that killed 100,000 cattle and they were laying around in the mud two days later, dead? No snow, everything melted. Uh, we have extreme circumstances in South America. Same, 250,000 alpacas, cold hardy alpacas killed from the same type of flash snowstorm. And again, these are patented processes. We have those patents at geoengineeringwatch.org. We're not guessing. Mm. This is, uh, this is, uh, so if, if these particles are in the air, here's, here's the thing that I always sort of come back to. Surely it's also going to be damaging those people who are paying for this. Presumably they're still breathing this in, even, uh, you know, so it can't... It, I, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to sort of square a circle here in which the people... I'm going to do that for you real quick. He's, the, what he's about to tell you is not exactly true, Richard. Um, the reason why they don't have to worry about the, the people who are actually, you know, the 10,000 or so that are at the top, that don't have to worry about this. Um, the reason why is because it depends on what heavy metals and minerals you're taking down here. So the majority of the 7.8 billion people, if you're taking them, let's say just use the vaccinations at birth, right? I think there's uh, around 240 ingredients that are in those concoctions that you take at birth, right? That we all gave our children, I gave mine, you gave your baby them, same things, right? So. Um, if you take that out of it, I'm sorry, if you, if you uh, include that or take that out of it, right alone, right, right from birth, people who, are, who know the system know not to give their babies all them, them heavy metals and minerals. So right from birth, they're already better off. Then, <coughs> don't eat the food um, that everyone else is eating. It's 7.8 billion zombie slaves are all eating the cows and the pigs and the vegetables and the, everything with no concern at all for its heavy metal and mineral makeup. We live for the bio system, the fake ass fucking lying motherfuckers, uh, humans that um, lie to us about this bio system. So, boy, I was really, I didn't realize I was that zoomed in before. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're full of shit. They lie every fucking thing comes out of their mouth is a lie, just like I said at the beginning. People who are orchestrating it, it must be, it must be affecting them. They can't be living in um, gas masks or other things. Extraordinarily important question. Why would they do this to themselves? Yes. And I... They don't do it to themselves. They're on a proper diet that they're not even affected by the mineral streets. That's why. They don't need to get blood transfusions. That's ridiculous. That's what he's about to say now. They don't need to go through all that shit. I would point out an example I mentioned a moment ago. The detonation of 2,400 nuclear bombs all over the world contaminated virtually all life on the planet. And we have a power structure that's addicted to power. Does an addict care that the next fix might kill them? Does a cancer care that it's unchecked proliferation will eventually kill the host. No. A cancer's objective is to spread and proliferate until the host eventually dies. It's a consequence. So, again... They know, they know 
that there's about to be a huge awakening that they have to control. They're doing it. The, the, the awakening, because, see, we all lost contact with the true creator over tens of thousands of years, best to my ability of timing it. We went for gods and more recently space alien gods. So therefore, we're lying to ourselves so badly and getting to the point where we all believe and give our energy up for a false system, the one we've all been living by for, in our case, that we're here now in this bio shell, you know, 50 years in my case, 150 years in my grandparents' case, and all that kind of shit. So we've got at least a few hundred years of verbal knowledge, which was all lies. All lies. Everything our grandparents and our great-grandparents told us were all lies. I don't know why they didn't figure it out. Maybe they did, and they didn't have a way of sharing it with each other, the ones that did figure it out. But now here we are. We are at an age where they're using this shit technology, the Internet, and we're using it to communicate rather than using the true creator's energy to communicate. We were all told some time ago, hundreds of years ago at least, that we had to go and... Um, we had to speak to God, and there was a one and only God, no matter what religion you were in. There was this God that you were, had to go to a priest to talk to this God and get through to him. You couldn't just do it on your own and this kind of thing. So they took away the, um, the idea of uh, the true creator's energy and that we could all use it because we were all living in it. So therefore, we could all use it at our, at our whim. They made it sound and seem generation after generation that it was not only hard but impossible and anyone claiming that they were talking to a god or and hearing from god was going to be considered insane and, and medical industry comes into it and declares you insane tells you no you're not seeing mineral street jets uh, flying all over um but yeah let's go back to these guys and we have nuclear power plants richard Fukushima may be an extinction level event by itself. There's no technology to fix it, no end in sight. We have Chernobyl that will likely be a meltdown event again because the sarcophagus is disintegrating. And yet in spite of that, we have those in power building 60 more new plants right now on top of the 440 that already exist. It takes two to three decades to cold shut down a nuclear power plant. When societal collapse occurs, we're going to have Fukushima times several hundred. Next. Climate engineering is also destroying the ozone layer. The ozone layer is not recovering, as we've been told, and now there's recent data as a week ago to again corroborate what geoengineeringwatch.org has said for... They've been nuclear blasting the ozone layers, which is, in reality, the veil. But they've been throwing nuclear bombs at that veil steadily, all the time, on a regular basis. Sometimes they'll even come out and show you photos of them doing just that. You can call it the Van Allen belts. You can call it the uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it. The, I call it the veil. That's how you know there's no satellites past that veil, <laughs> okay? So they, they get you to spend trillions of dollars a year. And I don't hear anybody bitching about this stuff, Richard, because you believe in outer space. So trillions of dollars a year, and they tell you that these cameras are up there, and these cameras, billions of dollars for one satellite camera just to watch another satellite camera, just so you can prove to the 7.8 billion zombies that there's actually a satellite up there. It makes no fucking sense. But anyways, they put these satellites all up there, they tell you. And there might be what's something that floats around up there on electromagnetic current at that level. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not the camera that you're seeing on Google Maps coming down through the clouds and then coming down. No, no, no. Been doing that shit since the weather balloon. We've been doing, we've had cameras on those balloons for a long, long time. We've always had the setup for that. And then they send the Bing car around, or that, that would be one example. They drive street to street uh, in order to get all those videos and map out all the streets and everything like that. That's why when GPS first came out and everything like that, you could easily uh, go down a side street. Someone tells you, and all of a sudden it was a street that got closed down 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and there's all trees growing up through it and everything. Well, why does, you know, why does the satellite not see that? Why does the satellite not know that if it's supposedly coming from a satellite? No, nah, it's because there's a fucking bin car and, and uh, maps and mapped out as a street at one time. All kinds of examples like that. 
uh, people that drove into lakes and stuff like that because, um, you know, because they, they blamed it on the human because the human was so smart. It was using a GPS system, and then all of a sudden it says, take a right here, and the person takes a right and drives into a lake. You must have heard those stories when they first came out. Yeah, well, why would GPS even think that there's a road there in the first place, you know? Because there was at one time, and it was still mapped in that way. It's not because the satellite seen it. Well over a decade, because we're metering UV radiation on the surface, which is a direct indication of ozone deterioration. We're getting UVC on the surface. That's a DNA damaging spectrum of UV radiation. It's killing plankton, killing insects, and climate engineering is absolutely the core causal factor, not hairspray cans, as we were told. Yeah. So the bottom line is here we have yet another existential threat. Because they're layering the skies, upper atmosphere, lower atmosphere, in order to control, you think about it, if the humidity's all staying down below, you can see them, they're laying them out today. That's why I got the camera rolling while I'm playing this. I mean, it's fucking beautiful. But at the same time, that you're seeing that. I mean, look at the true creator's work. I mean, it's fucking beautiful. You can't be missing this shit. I mean, look at it, man. It's right there. You can all see it. So why am I looking around my neighborhood right now for the last fucking six years? Uh, all my friends, family, why is everyone fucking disown me? Why am I the bad guy for showing you the true creator? Right? That makes no fucking sense. It makes no fucking sense. But no, they want to live in their comatose fucking state and continue on. And you're not helping Richard by doing the shit that you're doing. I don't know if you're part of the problem or not. I'm still deciding. Threat directly connected with climate engineering and back to the nuclear plants, if I can weave all this together. Our now damaged atmosphere has made us very susceptible to a CME, coronal mass ejection, solar flare. If we have a major event, like the Carrington event that happened in the 1800s, that would shut down grids all over the world. That would prevent nuclear power plants from being able to cool themselves. Again, Fukushima times several hundred, perhaps, game over. And yet they're doing this anyway. So, again, we, f we face a cancer, a headless, heartless, soulless cancer, each part trying to protect its own interest, but with no consideration of the consequences. And, and a final note, if you look at psychoanalysis straight from scientific study of those in power and their mental traits, there is a common thread. And that common thread is this, a near total lack of comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. We're dealing with a cancer. You paint a very bleak picture that it seems there is no escape from um, if it continues. And we're, as you said already, that we're already affected by this. I mean, I've been around nearly 60 years on this planet and uh, I, I've now learnt that all those 60 years I've been subject to some form of this nasty stuff. Stop the crime. That was the name of the lady. She's really good. And she's got other friends that have runoffs, also older, uh, not old ladies, but just older, um, people that you would more or less uh, probably listen to, you know? They don't swear like I do. They're not fucking trash mouths and stuff like that. Um, I can't help it. I'm just fucking pissed off that no one's looking after all this time. And still no one looks. It's just, it's, just, it's unbelievable. I mean, the evidence that, that 7.8 billion zombie slaves is all there for me. I mean, I had some fucking guy yesterday I let out in traffic. I was letting him go. And he wasn't catching it. I was flashing my lights. I'm waving him on. And, and then in the end... He's fucking yelling at me and swearing at me as he's leaving. And it really bothered me because uh, I'm thinking to myself, they won't even fucking look. But yet this is a big deal to these people, you know? Um, so he finally went. Anyways, he finally went out in front of me and then, you know, flipped me off and fucking yelled at me and sh everything. He was a fucking asshole, idiot. And all this. <laughs> I fucking don't, I don't know why. But a point being, you know, is that I'm, I'm not even, I don't even care. I was smiling at him. I was smiling, laughing, shaking my head, saying, what a fucking idiot, you know? Someone's just letting you go in traffic, and that's what you do. But I'm thinking to myself as I'm looking up and looking around and saying, they don't get it, man. 7.8 fucking billion zombies driving around in his fancy car. He had some, like, racing suit on, and driving a, uh, you know, at least a 
nice car and everything like that. So he's Mr. Moneybags. Well, that's pretty typical, you know. Everybody thinks about that, you know. But any reality, give them the fucking reality. No way, they're not going to go for it. I'm telling you right now, 7.8 billion people, and and there are 7.8 billion zombie slaves. They're not going to go for it. There'll be a few thousand like myself, and then we'll be like, it, it won't make any difference. See, you know, can't win anything. You know, we can try and have a laugh with it, but you ain't going to get it anywhere. Um, and it probably explains a hell of a lot of uh, ill health for a lot of people, perhaps mental health, breathing metal particulates into the, into the, you know, going into the bloodstream, stream, getting into the brain and all of those sort of things, um, and, and all of that. Is there... A but why would you care? Why would you care? I mean, you're okay with all the vaccinations, you're okay with vaccinating babies, you're okay with uh, going in MRI machines and x-ray machines over the years and being exposed to nuclear radiation and all that. That's okay, that's all fine. But when it comes to uh, releasing nuclear weapons, 24 of them all over the earth and all this, uh, not even all over the earth, you've got the balls to say all over the world. There's no such thing as a world, that's all made up. You guys made it up and now you're refusing to let it go because you're gonna have to let it go if you're gonna see reality uh, for what it is. Uh, you're gonna have to let all that shit go. And they've got you set up for false flag shit on that end and all kinds of lies telling you they got the flat earth movement, they got the uh, matrix, they got Keanu Reeves on their side. They've got the holographic images, the, the world you live in, they'll call it is a holographic image. They got the new world order, nothing new about it. It's not a world, it's an earth. Even calling it an earth anymore may not be enough for what it actually is. The same thing that I was saying about the moon. The moon has to be renamed. It's, the moon is not a good name for the moon. It's a terrible name because it, the image that we have of what a moon is is so off about what that thing up there is. And uh, it's not even up there. It's all the way through here. It's down here. It goes down through. It's uh, it's not a something up in the sky that you can land on. It's none of those things. And we were all lied to. And it's an amazing thing. And once you see how it all works, and I'm figuring out the timelines, and once you see how this all works, you're going to be like, holy fuck, man. We passed on this for how long? I don't even know a couple thousand years maybe that we passed on it and we keep going through these fucked up resets and shit um yeah it's not going to be an easy thing for people to get their heads around because they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to they want to continue being lied to it's easier lie to me to my death it says on your thing that you're fighting this what hope have we got and what tools have we got to stop it and is there a, a positive future to look forward to, or a glimmer? If I could back up to one, one more, I'll answer that question in a moment. If I could mm. back up to one more aspect of those in power, they do have access to medical treatments that the common public does not have access to that involves chelation of the blood. We've interviewed one individual that has been to this facility, one in Germany, where the blood is, is cycled through the body into... Uh, chelation technology yeah okay so they're going for blood transfusions big fucking deal everybody does that's not what they're doing the all you have to do is if you wanted to stay safe from this there are several things that uh, that you could stay safe from uh, a lot of it um, but we took them all away. I was I was talking about it on a video the other day I had to delete so many videos on it over the last I don't know if they're still up. They took the lead out of the paint. They took the metallics out of the asbestos shingles in the house. These were protecting us. They took the copper off the roof. They took the copper out of the pipes and replaced it with PVC. They made a lot of changes over the years. I'm just naming off a few. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of these changes that all affected us in a big way. What we were spraying our crops with was killing the metallus. There were a lot of things that were killing the metallus the nanolist metallus, and, the, and they don't kill them. They're just breaking them up so they cannot be used to form biospecies that we don't want to have around, not in our food or anything else because they're bad for the biosystem. Funguses, molds, that kind of thing. And that's exactly what they've done. 
and we've all watched it happen. I've been talking about it for years. If you don't have a degree in medical science, then no one will fucking listen to you. You can tell them you can see it with your own eyes. They won't listen to you. Think anyone's gonna? I was telling the story about the guy I went. I was camping, and he just got his uh, degree that week. And uh, he was gonna be a news guy, weather guy, or some shit like this. You know, he's gonna be working with the weather, and he didn't understand the mineral streets and said they were a conspiracy theory and all this kind of shit. They were all happening right above our head, just like they are right now. I mean, I'm putting them on camera. There are thousands of these jets going by every fucking hour, and no one even looks. They will not pay attention. You could be pointing to them, have your camera on and making a spectacle of it, and they still will not look. They'll just tell you it's some plane coming out of the airport, you know. So, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, we're fucked. That purges the heavy metals from the blood, and that type of treatment perhaps once a year would exempt them from many of the symptoms that the rest of us would deal with. Because you're correct, these bioavailable elements, the smaller the particle, the more harmful it is, the more bioavailable, the more your system absorbs it and can't get rid of it. For what he's saying right now, think of combination particles, okay? So if you take one particle in your food, and then you're gonna take another particle that you're breathing in, your, in, the, in the air, and then you're gonna take another particle whether it be a heavy metal or, or uh, mineral nano uh, particles, okay? Um, just take a heavy metal, like he's talking about aluminum. So you're gonna take some aluminum in, in your water, you're gonna take some. So if you up the dosage of mercury or aluminum or nickel or anything like that in all your cooking, you have to know what they're doing. So what about the times we were cooking in um, copper pans and tin pans and aluminum pans and, uh, pots and pans and this kind of thing, right? Just cooking in them, using them in utensils. Now we cook in Formica. So we've gone over to synthetic. We used to keep our drinks in a copper pot. So we were getting copper. Then we were told at some point that copper was not good and that too much of it was bad for us and that they stopped making all that and they put us in the plastic. So then we're in plastic and plastic and plastic. There was a very short time when we were in glass and using glass, which was definitely better than plastic. But we also, when we went to glass, we were not getting the same heavy metals and minerals that were good for us. It was good for us to get certain amounts of copper that we no longer get. It was good for us to get certain amounts of heavy metals and minerals that we know nothing about that our body should get. And each person is gonna be different because we were all born at different places and we were all born under a different timeline. So whatever timeline we were born, I was gonna depend on what heavy metal and mineral makeup that we're gonna um, end up working better at, living longer longer lives, healthier lives, healthier even bio lives, even though we're paying more attention to the, and look at the imagery, it's unbelievable that we were not seeing this all this time. You can go back a hundred years in your television shows and your movies, and you can see that the clouds were always like this. This is nothing new to see the imagery. The only thing that's different over the last 20 years, this guy's talking about it, is the geoengineering project. We used to put up the heavy metals and minerals in our stacks in the factories because we were under an industrial revolution for a long time, hundreds of years at a time. And under those industrial revolutions that we had hundreds of years at a time, we were doing a lot of smelting, putting a lot of heavy metals and minerals up into the atmosphere. How do we um, melt the metals? Burning wood. So we were putting aluminum, strontium, barium, lithium oxide carbons already up into the atmosphere. We just were not doing it with jets. That's why in the last 20 years you have, I don't know, eight to 10 new cloud formations like the ones that I'm showing you now that we did not have when we were kids. The cloud formations were different, but the imagery was still there. So that's why you know it's not a human thing, it's a true creator thing as far as seeing the imagery. Because you can go see it in the rock, the stone, the water. You know it's not a holographic image like a lot of people are going to try to sell you on. Oh, and that's just the government doing holographic images. Nah, it's from the veil to the ground. It's not a cloud thing. It's not a mineral street thing What they're going to try to psyop you out and tell you it's a chemtrail thing. You're liars. All those words are psyop terminology and even those people that are that might possibly be good people stop the crime is, is her name i'll have to go look up her channel since richard's got me on this now so every person we've tested hair blood urine is packed with these metals starting with aluminum and it affects every part of our 
body's neurological system, immune system, everything. But they would have, those in power would have a means of at least mitigating some of those. We went from packing our food uh, in seal sacked glass jars for many years over to aluminum cans. So what this guy's talking about, about putting the aluminum into the sky, big fucking deal. We were already taking in way more aluminum than we already needed. I'm just giving the cans of an example because we drank out of aluminum cans. We drank our beer out of aluminum cans. A lot of the liquids that we were drinking out of those aluminum cans, they were um, purposely a uh, acids were added that would break down the aluminum in small particles, particulates, whatever. I mean, this is all 7.8 billion zombies. We all went along with this shit. Those symptoms through that type of chelation, which is not available to the rest of us. Mm. As far as our overall picture, what we can do, and this is imperative for people to face that however dire the horizon is, if we don't face it fully, we have no chance of dealing with it. If you're standing in the middle of the freeway at rush hour, are you better off facing traffic or turning your back to it and hoping for the best? Right. So I, th I, think, I think that answer is clear. So we can't know, uh, in regard to the climate or the state of the climate, and we, we certainly have a very damaged planet at this point, but from any perspective, from any viewpoint on the state of the climate, how can we have any legitimate discussion about it without addressing... See, they keep calling it a planet. See, they, they're fucked up. They don't know. They don't get it, really. You know, there's so many people that just, they're going to be too far off. How can you help them, you know? You can't. It, it take too much for them to get to that point where they can actually accept all these lies. Zero and infinity, lies, fucking uh, evolution, a lie. Um, I, I hate to say it, but God, a lie. Everything's outer space, lies, all fucking nonsense. And we spent a lot of our energy, never mind the dollars that the energy earned, but the energy that we wasted generation after generation going off to wars to fight wars because uh, due to, again, money. We wanted uh, power, money. I, I don't know how to get it. This first. And we've seen extraordinary hypocrisy from the so-called environmental groups mm. that will not address, will not acknowledge, will not admit to this single most damaging human activity of all. And we feel that is criminal. It's inexcusable. And they're trying to protect their 501 nonprofits so they don't address this issue. We know that because our attorneys at geoengineeringwatch.org have communicated with their attorneys. They don't want to lose their 501, so they don't want to address this issue. And that's simply not acceptable. So if we can stop this interference with the planet's life support. I'll go check out his channel, and I'll try to email him. The, the next people I'm going to bring you in at over the next couple of days, because I'm gonna make like 10 series related to this one video that I'm doing right here. I'll do 10 parts to Richard's series designated to it. And I'll include uh, Stop the Crime channel and a few others. Maybe I'll even go look up Richie from Boston, see what he's been up to. But there's a lot of people out there that are a lot of PSYOP channels that are out there pointing out the same shit that this guy is. He just, maybe he might be the UK version of, you know, or stop the crime or one of those channels support systems then we can assess where we're at until we stop this we can't and we can say mathematically statistically these programs continue unabated and they involve not just the spraying of these toxic particles richard but also the manipulation of these particles with extraordinarily powerful frequency transmissions from ground-based facilities this is you've heard of harp perhaps in alaska yeah, vaguely, yes. Yeah, vaguely. Just <laughs> I encourage your listeners to search that. H A A R P. That's the acronym. It's um, and, and if they if they search that and look at that facility, that is literally a weapon of mass destruction that is capable of transmitting millions of watts of power to the ionosphere. This is part of climate engineering operations, part of how they steep steer upper level wind currents. That can transmit Millions of watts of power into the atmosphere create an electrical chain reaction that heats that level of the atmosphere to extraordinarily high temperatures, and that can cause a high-pressure heat dome. You've probably heard the meteorologists refer to a heat dome in recent years, and that's part of that operation. There are also ground-based facilities that manipulate these particles, so when you saturate the atmosphere with electrically conductive particles, 
they then become susceptible to manipulation with frequency transmission. So all of that's bombarding us, not just the absorption of these materials, but the frequency transmissions, which are far stronger than the communications transmissions that so many are fighting, justifiably so. So back to, again, if we can, this interference with the Earth's life support systems is so profound, so total, that we can't truly assess the state of the climate. We know it's damaged. But we can't assess what the planet will, we, will do, how it will respond, until or unless we stop these programs. So the question is, how do we stop the programs? Yes, I'm sorry, I wasn't, was not mean to skip that. This is how. People like you that are helping to get this out in the open so that those participating, including in the military, including defense industry personnel, including their families, so that they realize they are literally participating. Okay, so he doesn't know enough then. He doesn't know enough at all about it. I, I'm gonna have, I ain't got fucking time to do all this shit, man. There's too many important, other important things to be doing. And they're all just as important as the next. He's wrong, he's wrong about this. Let me hear him out in their own near-term, I can't express that enough, near-term demise. Right. And at that point, we have a chance of stopping these programs from the inside out. It is our only chance, I would argue. If we can get this into the open, in populations around the globe, understand what their governments have done to them without their knowledge or consent, that every single weather cataclysm, and how could we even begin to quantify how many there are? It's, it's now every day, all over the world, that every one of those events is now a liability for governments involved. Because would that event have happened at that place at that time without these programs? And the answer is likely no, because they've disrupted the entire system. So if we can, again, get this out in the open so people realize not just the weather cataclysm, but every breath they take is laden with these particles. And, and to put that in perspective, we talked about the damage earlier, but the amount of particles we're inhaling based on recent... Okay, so he's not going to get the families of these jets because these jets, most of them are drones. Okay, they're drones. They're they're not. They're radio controlled. There's one going by. I'm going to try to get him. Um, these are radio controlled um, drones, and that's hard for people to believe as well. So there might be one pilot um, with another guy in the back of one jet that's running probably 12 to 15 other jets. I, I don't see any, any other way about it. It's too easy for them to do it that way. We know that they've had training to do it that way. And what they do is they um, can run you know, many jets at a time. So you, you'll have one pilot. So it's not tens of thousands of jets a day um, with different pilots in them. You know, I've had people say that to me over the years, Joel, oh, come on, Mike, um, you're telling me that there's tens of thousands of uh, pilots hired just to go do this? No, man. It's not what I'm saying. You guys don't pay a fucking attention. It's not my secret. They tell you that they do it this way. They tell you they're training their people to do things this way. And that's exactly what they do. They don't tell you what I'm showing you. They're not showing you the true creator slash false creator. They nah, like, look at it. Who cares? Nobody looks anyway. I've been showing people for six fucking years. Nobody looks. Nobody pays attention. I had another guy, uh, a couple of people actually. I went and checked my bell, and as usual, people want to argue with me and fight about shit and everything. And well, I'm not going to bother. Fuck it. I'm not going to bother. I see what I see. If you guys don't want to look and you don't want to see it, then don't look, go away. But I'm not gonna, I don't have time to fuck around and argue with everybody about shit, really don't. Um, so this whole thing is all obvious, um, and it should be to everybody, it should be very obvious to everyone now. We can all see the true creator's work. Um, we can see the builders everywhere, the triangular builders building everything in this realm. What are they building in the shapes of feline, can feline canine, rodent, ape, human, and beast? over and over and over again faces only look for the faces we'll get into body imagery later um to keep going along with all this mineral street chemtrail bullshit and stuff like that i'm going to do 10 videos hit it hard but i'm going to show you guys the true creators work at the same time that i'm doing it i'm going to try to explain why that also these sites here these channels like this guy are also part of the scarecrow thing and to get you guys going down the wrong roads and the wrong paths and not see the true creators work because you're still going to be thinking everything uh, being done on a human scale is somehow magical and wizard 
type shit and uh, it's not it's not it's technology that we used to have we want to wanted to pretend I guess for a long time that we didn't have it and it was mystical and so it's not um, as far as the uh, calling out people that are flying the jets and to stop the camp trailing and stuff like that that's to me seems like uh, just like what Richard was saying a couple weeks ago about cutting four cameras out of 10,000 cameras so you got tens of thousands of cameras up and then you got one of your guests was denying that the camera systems have facial recognition. Yeah, the cameras don't, you fucking geniuses. What it is is the computer system, the main computer system. So as long as you have the image, it doesn't matter whether it's on YouTube, right? YouTube, your, your cameras that you're doing your YouTube videos on, they don't have facial recognition cameras, right? That some of them may not. Um, but yet, the, if you put them up on YouTube, there's copyright strikes on people's faces. You can get copyright strikes on people's faces that are um, people that have their image copyright, um, uh, whatever, royalty. Uh, it's all right there for us to see. It's just so right in our face, you know? And it's always been there. When you, If anybody comes to my channel, you're going to first start thinking to yourself, oh my God, what in... Um, this is all new, right? It's all new. Otherwise, I would have seen it before. No, you wouldn't have because I didn't even see it either. I thought the same thing. That's why I went back and you can go to 100 years of movies and television and go back and look at everything and you'll see, oh, shit, it was like this all along. So we were just zombified. We were zombies. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. We were zombies. science study we are inhaling as many as 20 million nanoparticles with every breath we take try to try to imagine that that sounds impossible but consider that you can fit a hundred thousand nanoparticles across the width of a human hair hundred thousand and we have quantified based think of how many particles in the foods that you eat because that's even more that's even more particulates because each plant that you eat is soaking up different particulars, right? So they're, each one of them is soaking up just as many as you are breathing in because they're absorption and secretion creatures and they're absorbing all the heavy metals and minerals that you're complaining about being dropped out in the sky. But then we eat them and we're taking in the same particulars, right? So breathe it, drink it, eat it. That's what we're doing. Based on testing with one of the world's most renowned agricultural institutions, the amount of material in the precipitation over that particular state, if extrapolated around the whole globe, it looks as if they are, the data indicates that they are dispersing somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 million tons of these particles into our skies annually. That's inconceivable. It's changing soil pH values. It's, it's killing soil microbiome, which is killing forests. That's killing crops. It is, but it's the same amount that, um, the same amount, but just a little bit different of a, ingredients that they were putting out during the industrial revolutions and up in the stacks. They knew what they were doing all along. Sterilizing soils. Uh, this is a fight for life. That's why I'm focused on this issue. Because it is the biggest hole in the bottom of the boat at this moment, the greatest threat we face short of nuclear cataclysm. If we don't deal with it, we're done. During the lockdown, um, we had a year, I suppose, on and off with different company, different states, different countries closing down at different periods. Presumably, and we saw the airplanes weren't flying as frequently. Was there a, a dip in the amount of uh, these particles going into the atmosphere as a result of that? Can we actually see on a graph that there was, or, or were they still flying? So he's about to lie again because he's going to say that, no, they slowed down during that time. No, they did not. They had other times in history where they picked up. There were different presidents and different events where they picked up for uh, two, three months at a time and stuff like that. Usually when, uh, uh, I won't even say when, there's, there's, there's a lot of different times that that happens. But um, during um, the COVID or during the after 9-11 or any of that stuff, no, there were no changes. There were no major changes just because of um, those incidents or anything like that. 
they st in other words, they still did it. Hey, when there was a no-fly zone for everyone else, we still had, that wasn't for military. That was only uh, private planes, right? But he's about to lie to us and tell us that it was. Flying and we didn't know. They were in, in many regions still there. Now, again, there was definitely a, a measurable alteration in some regions. It's felt the same thing after 9-11, when all the aircraft were grounded in the U.S. after 9-11. Yeah. We, 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 that was measured statistically. We saw daytime temperatures go up, which we would expect without these particles in the atmosphere. We saw nighttime temperatures go down for the same reason. And that's key to understand the flaw of these programs, the very premise of these programs to block some of the, the daytime thermal energy input. You trap that heat at night, negating any stated positive effect. And we now know from the most recent science study that the, the entire premise for solar radiation management to mimic the cooling effect of volcanoes is completely flawed. Because even in the, event, in the case of a volcanic eruption, it causes only temporary toxic cooling at the cost of a near-term worsened warming because of the damage to the atmosphere, because of the trapped heat. Everything that we see, disrupted rainfall patterns, when you put all these particles in the air, you completely <coughs> disrupt hydrological cycles. So again, the whole premise for this is completely flawed, completely false. This is being used as a weapon, period. And if I could give one more example to the weapon part, Richard, this is, this is important. Mm. Right after 9-11, we had the NATO Supreme Commander, General Wesley Clark, was given a list of Middle Eastern countries that the U.S. military intended to target. Subsequently... No, it's funny, listening to this guy talk, I just keep thinking of, over the years, all the people that laughed at me or... Anytime I brought this up and tried showing them the mineral streets and tried showing them these things, before I found the true creator, before I found the work, before I found the builders, I, I knew there was something wrong with the mineral street project going on. And then all them people that fucking would laugh and think that it's nuts and what do you what do you think they're doing? And I'd be like, who cares what they what I think? Don't. Doesn't it bother you to see tens of thousands of these fucking things being sprayed out all over you? And they still laugh and walk away. It's unbelievable, you know? And I'm talking tens of thousands of people. I'm not a quiet person. I fucking piss everyone off. Every single one of those countries underwent a once in 1,000 year drought. Statistically, mathematically, that would be impossible to have that kind of consistency unless there was a factor in this equation that we weren't being told about that factor is climate engineering, aka weather warfare, and to and if that destabilized their food production, thus destabilized their populations, thus made those countries easier to manipulate, invade, occupy. And in the case of some of those countries, Iran for one, they their president, their leader, went to the floor of the UN and stated such that NATO was cutting off their precipitation. Stated it on film, on right. the record. Right. And, we saw none of and nobody that cares. So this is simply weather no warfare. It's blood. been going on, if we look at Project Popeye in Vietnam in the 60s, it's a matter of historical record. The U.S. was so successful at manipulating rain over the Ho Chi Minh Trail that by the 70s, the international community passed in-mod treaties, environmental modification treaties, forbidding weather manipulation for wartime. Not that anybody paid attention to that, but this is all historical record. So for those who want to pretend this is some wild conspiracy Matter of fact, <clears throat> one of the <laughs> calling out the Mineral Street people <clears throat> over the years, you know, uh, back to Jamie Lee from A Plain Truth or uh, Stop the Crime, who I'm going to play next, and all these people. I used to think to myself, and I haven't thought about it in a long time, but I used to all the time when I first found the true creator's work. How the fuck could they never see this? How could they have never seen the imagery everywhere, right? The, the true creator's work. It took me a good year. First I found the builders, the triangular shapes, and I think what it was is I found the eyes, the nostrils, and the mouths first. And there was a Jamie Lee from A Plain Truth and a few other people were trying to claim that these triangular shapes were some space alien nonsense. 
And I was like, I see these triangular shapes everywhere, man, in the clouds, at the cloud level. So let me go look at them again. And I started noticing them more and more and more. And then it got down to the point where I started noticing the imagery. And I was saying, how the fuck could I have never seen this? And then, of course, taking it one level to the next, like they were saying the other day, once I found it in the clouds, I took it to the water and rocks and everything else because I'm saying all right well if it's feline canine road and ape human and beast at the cloud level there it should be birds at the cloud level so let's go to the water and see if it's still feline canine road and ape human and that kind of thing and if I go to you know to the dirt it's am I gonna see bugs or whatever you know that kind of shit or trees uh, am I gonna see flowers and trees and that kind of thing so because that's what you would think because this would happen, you know, but it's not. Everything's feline, canine, road, and human and beast, which is beautiful because that's the evidence that I'm always looking for, you know. Um, that's good evidence for us. Oh, there's my 46 minutes anyway, so all right, my time's up. Let's leave the camera alone for a minute. Mm. There's so that's just people that simply don't have the courage to face the truth. Mm. So if you, if you were waging war, let's say two nations were waging war against one another, I can't think that anything would be happening like that at the moment. A great big continent could be possibly doing anything. But in a way, you wouldn't need to have troops on the ground and people doing that if you've got the ability just to shut off and destroy a, a country's food supply. Let's say a country was... I don't know, known as a breadbasket of the of the world and was producing most yes. of the wheat, or in a in a vague scenario, <laughs> just for YouTube's terms and conditions sort of thing. Um, you wouldn't need to have troops and, and tanks and and people being shot at and all of that because you could easily uh, control them that way, which then makes you think, well, if that's possible, I wonder what uh, what's what's the uh, what's the story there going on if that's just all theatre to uh, distract us all. Uh, it, it seemed, as you say, because this is 